When we came to Nepal, cheering basically was just incredible, sort of showing us around. And he says, whatever you need, I'd like to help. And I gave him a list of, like, I need a helicopter, I need you know, <laughs> trucks to take people up to the mountains, I need uh, this, this particular mountain village so we can see the Twin Peaks, which are in the book. You know? And, uh, you know, cheering actually, um, actually, you know, really supported uh, us in the filmmaking process. And in doing that, we became fast friends. And he took me to his village um, in the mountains, and that was just astounding. And I did make it to a border crossing between India and Nepal. There are 26 border crossings, I think. And 11 of them are monitored by an NGO called Naiti Nepal. They have survivors monitoring these crossings. And they intercept about, uh, it's about 2,000 kids a year of the estimated 20,000 that are trafficked. I don't think I could have done this long walk on coal without having met many survivors. Because once I started meeting survivors of sex trafficking, um, it was sort of like I was done. I had to help these kids. I wanted to actually see for myself what the red light district was like and kind of feel personally what these girls were going through. I didn't know it was so dangerous to do this, uh, but I hired a group of guys to help follow me and, and film me while I did this. And filming is illegal in the red light district. You can't take pictures and you can't film. So we're in the Jeep and they have blacked out all the windows with just a small hole for the camera lens. And one of the guys, and I just dressed like a traditional Indian girl who would work there so people would think that I was a prostitute as well. And it was at night, about 11 o'clock at night, and I just started walking the streets. Um, one guy was out of the Jeep and he was walking a little bit behind me smoking a cigarette, just sort of acting like my pimp. And um, it was kind of incredible how many men would come up and sort of touch your arm and yank on your hair. And I didn't speak Hindi, so they were saying all kinds of things. You could get the idea of what they were saying just by the tone and things like that. But uh, it helped that I didn't understand Hindi because then I could just keep a blank face and, and keep walking. Uh, but I did that for about four nights just so I could really feel what these girls go through. Um, so it was really interesting to see that. And then I spent a lot of time at Rescue Foundation in Mumbai meeting a lot of the girls who had been rescued and just understanding their process of, of what they go through and how they work with girls who have been rescued. And interestingly, the first time I met with girls, there were three girls in the room. One of them was really, really small, and it just so ended up she spoke the same language that I did. She had just been rescued like two weeks earlier, and I was like one of the first people to speak her language in the whole place that she had been in contact with. And so we just started talking in, in our language, and she was able to share a lot more of the details of what she had experienced and what she had gone through in her time in the brothel. She was nine years old. And then at the end, she just sort of asked me, in a very small voice, she said, uh, she called me Didi, which is sister, and she said, Didi, will you tell my story? And then, you know, before I could respond, she paused and she says, but please don't use my name. And it just broke my heart because I thought there's so many people who don't have a voice and they need us to tell their story. Uh, how the education not only empower or give a life to the children but also the whole society. We have seen that through the education society has been changing. Let's not talk about others. My own village, we have seen those change. I've seen the villages start moving back to the village. And also there are other places where the burden rate is very high. So the, once we did this research, we are completely confirmed that education is a key way out of this, all this, either be a trafficking or any other problem, the social problem that we've been facing.